from Husky Stadium in the Emerald City of Seattle, Washington, Prime Network presents the Pac-10 Game of the Week. Today, the Washington Huskies host the Trojans of Southern California. Weather-wise, this could be Tahiti, Rio de Janeiro, or Palma de Mallorca, but in fact, we're in the Emerald City of Seattle, Washington. Boy, what an afternoon for college football. We'll begin at their own 20, and there is the man for Don Jean, sophomore Mark Brunel, 6'2", 205 pounds from Santa Maria, California, about 45 miles north of Santa Barbara. The Baxton receivers led by Greg Lewis, number one in the Pac-10 in rushing, and the offensive line, of course, led by the strong side quick guard, Dean Kirkland. He is two-time all Pac-10. On second and 10, but is the setback. Tight end in motion to the near side, and Ricky sees the football for the first time, and he is knocked down. Entman on the tackle, but it will be Travis Richardson. He will be calling his name all day. He leads the Huskies in sacks with three. Chico Fraley, he made the stop a moment ago. He will be a tough customer, as will Eric Briscoe. He is the rover back. And when Marinovich gets warmed up, he will be spending a lot of time roving. Well, they got to get pressure on him right here. On third and five, Brunel looking right. Going for it. It is caught at the one-yard line. And out of bounds, it is Mario Bailey. for the sidelines, good timing, the ball throw right there. Now watch him break off of him. Not bad coverage, you can't get a whole lot better than that, but unfortunately Mike Salmon gets beat, and the Huskies are knocking on the door inside the one yard line. There's a young man who has trouble keeping his weight at 157 pounds. And the Huskies from the one. It is Lewis. He got it. And a flag is down. Pac-10 game of the week. Our hearty congratulations. Well, thank you, Phil. I got to tell you, it was a mighty nostalgic evening, a lot of fun. And incidentally, I might add that uh, Don James invited us down to visit for a little bit uh, with the Husky team and talk a little bit about some of the old days. So they get their composure. They're going to be out of this ball game in a hurry. Back but upstairs. Trojans with double wide receivers to the far side. Pass intended for Wellman, and it is intercepted by Washington Eric Briscoe, the rover back. see we have two left-handers here today which move back to their own 10 and now it is first and 20 for Southern California 10 nothing Washington Urbans Chico Fraley He's almost halfway there in the first three games of the season in his production from last season. First and ten Trojans, their first sustained drive of the afternoon. Marinovich tries to come to the near side, and he is slummed under by John Cook and Chico Fraley. That, that is what you have to do to stop Marinovich. Take him off of his rhythm. He likes to throw left. He's running to his left as he centers the screen. Fraley was upfield there to cut him off. But Marinovich sees Empman coming across at that point. And uh, he said, I better pull this one down. And so what they did is they took away his pass. What did the Huskies to do? He said, we look for Washington to come at us from the eye. Well, they were going to a trip set here to throw the football, looking to try and get a man-for-man -man coverage. But it's pass protection that's going to be important. Now everybody out. He's 
taking what he can get. Second down and goal. takes a look. He makes a very cardinal sin for a quarterback. No interception. You talk about that Husky defense. Well, those linebackers, the, one of the strengths of their team, their two best are out and out of the group of six or seven. They don't have a player that is less than four or seven in the 40 speed-wise, so they have excellent foot speed. Double wide receivers to the near side. It is Gaspard and McKay. Watch this, folks. That's what it's like to be a quarterback. Yeah, it's kind of a push. He didn't get hit. 
too badly, but I think he hurt his shoulder in the process. I think you're absolutely right. He all Okay, you know, of all the cheerleaders on this Washington squad, one girl really has the inside track, Jenny James. He happens to be the daughter of head coach uh, Don James, and he talked this week about uh, the crowd getting rowdy. What did he say to you? He, he came home after the first game, and he, he very nicely told us that we needed to get the crowd really into the game. And, and But they've done their job today and made it really easy for us. I'm sure the difference between winning and losing, Dad's going to be in a real good mood tonight. Oh, yeah, it's going to be great. I can go home this week. <laughs> All right, back upstairs. Does that mean Glenn is counting a pelt on the wall? He has a ways to go. conservative approach. The Huskies offensive surge has been phenomenal today. There's Turner and the surge is there again. Puts down Washington. Southern California trying to avoid the shutout. The last time they got the over back in 1985 coming near side, he is hit, and it is intercepted at the one-yard line. And does this crowd love it? Eric Briscoe, second interception for the afternoon. So they deny the Trojans the end zone, but they're still 20. 29 to go, and this is well played. Watch the cutoff out here to try and keep the, the quarterback inside. Makes him throw, but look at that move to break in front of ball just a little bit behind him. But that was an excellent job by the defensive back to make the play. And the Huskies still flying around with this 31 to nothing lead. And you win and play a very, very tough Arizona State team. Yeah, I know there's been a lot of conversation on this Rose Bowl situation, and I'm sure they'll have a leg up. But let's watch this one. Holy pressure! Safety blitz. It worked. Don, that play right there, a microcosm of what has taken place all day long. Indeed, they have not been able to deal with the Husky blitzing. As the sun begins to set over Seattle, the Washington Huskies 31, the Trojans of Southern California nothing. SC coming in, a five and a half point favorite. It was not to be today. Now, next.